Hi everyone. Today we'll be discussing about problem statement. Problem statement. Really problem. Problem statement. Yes, this is, I would say, the heart of your research. Entire research and definitely we write in chapter one. So the importance of writing a good problem statement is a really a greater challenge but i would say yes if we know how to write a good problem statement we can satisfy our supervisors and this is the point where our supervisors are not happy with and uh, they claim it is not focused they claim sometimes it is not talking the thing that i'm trying to express and sometimes uh, they have some common blame that we don't know how to write a good problem statement yes I'm agreeing this statement because I also have some students and they are coming with uh, few pages two or three pages sometime half of a page sometime uh, maybe five six pages and the thing that I see this is not problem statement what I see is this is something like literature review or sometime paragraph writing which is not correct remember problem statement again is very special heading very special part because this is the main thing what is the problem and we know that any research starts with a problem so if someone fails to identify the problem is what is associated with this research or this research phenomenon definitely uh, he or she will fail to create the logic why this research is needed to be conducted right so how to write a good problem statement basically there are many ways to write the problem statement usually what we do we just bring up some issues but maybe they are not the problem you see symptom and problem two different things I may have something like fever uh, I'm having fever I'm having temperature in my uh, the whole body and headache and back pain and some other things these are not problems trust me these are not problems these are only symptoms. These are only the issues that I'm facing with. I may have something very serious, but we need to identify what is the problem so, so that my body is so warm, right? That's why issues, symptoms, uh, they are not really problems. We need to understand the difference between uh, the differences among this, okay? so. When we want to write the problem statement, the first thing is called the gap. Where is the gap of this research? We have to identify the gap correctly. How to write the gap? Yes, we need to look from two different, at least two different perspectives. One is called practical gap or practical problem. Another one is called academic gap or academic problems. Now, when you talk about practical gaps or practical problems, the first question, the first question arises is what? What is the problem? Again, not issue, problem. Again, not symptom, problem. What is the problem? Number second, since uh, we are claiming there is a problem, because of this problem, who is suffering? Who is suffering because of the problem? Is it a person? Is it uh, an individual? Is it a group? Or is it a society? Is it a industry? It is. Is it an industry? Is it a sector? It is. Is it a country itself? What? Who? I mean, who is having or facing these problems? And number three, we need to identify if we are having a problem and a particular group or whatever they are facing the problem. So what can be a potential solution of this problem? But that part, we may not write in problem statement. We only have a little touch on it because for this part, another section called significance of the study, where we need to write in detail how to, I mean, after conducting this research, uh, what are the potential things that we are going to gain from this research? Okay, now I'm gonna show you one thing uh, maybe you can find in uh, many um, online uh, database or 
there's the E-class of your university, <clears throat> you'll find a lot of things uh, that talk about problem statement. But these three questions for practical problems, yes, we need to address it carefully. Now, another part is called academic problem. Usually, this part is something like common we write in all the research. I mean, all research, they try to pull up those issues called lack of research, um, dearth of research, limited number of studies have been conducted, these kind of things, yes. We need to write in terms of uh, the content itself, uh, maybe research phenomenon, perhaps a research perspective, or maybe uh, from geographical perspective or location, like for example, in Malaysia, in Sri Lanka, in Vietnam, in Kazakhstan, in US, in Australia, in Canada, these kind of things. So lack of research, lack of academic research on uh, blah, 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 blah. We, that's how we can write this part. We can uh, encounter this part. But remember, whatever we write, it has to be from gap perspective. Where is the gap? Okay. Now, few things we need to remember. Number one, we know about the past, what happened, right? And when you are writing this problem statement, that means now, means right now, present. But we don't know what's gonna happen in future, right? Because nobody is like fortune teller, correct? But this time, we need to play a role called fortune teller. You know why and how? Number one, we have some problems starting from the past till now, right? And for these problems, what can be the potential additional problem in future we need to write. And we need to write in uh, such a way that it really creates the justifications. I know that somebody has done something in the past. That is why right now it is the problem that we are facing. If I am a good researcher, I should know what will happen in future, correct? what this person will do. But now we are dealing not with a person, but we are dealing maybe uh, with an industry or with a sector or even sometime in other bigger picture. So we need to provide the justifications what's gonna happen in future if it continues. So we need to stop it right now, correct? If we can't stop it right now, that means we can't rescue the situation. So you see, when we write like this, definitely a problem statement will be focused. Number second or number third or number fourth, whatever I have said so far. Another one in this perspective. Remember one thing, you are not writing the background of the study. So no tables, no figures, nothing will be included in this part, problem statement. No, here you are only talking about the problems, you're only focusing on the problems and creating the logic why this research is really needed, correct? Remember one thing, after writing the problem statement, try to read again and try to find out whether your title and problem statements, they're saying the same thing. If no, then something wrong, something's very wrong, correct? And your supervisor will say again, thank you so much, I have read your problem statement, but please go back and do it again. Okay, so of course we don't want it to be happened like this. Finally, I would say, remember, we are addressing some of the problems, some of the gaps, and we are trying to create the logic and rationales why this research is important. This one will be reflected, should be reflected in your research questions and research objectives. Okay, so problem statement will pull up some of the issues, some of the symptoms, mainly some of the potential problems and some of the future problems may happen, correct? And those, all these problems and everything should be solved after conducting this research. That's why we need to plot our research questions and research objectives such a way that these really create the logic. I think uh, that's all about problem statement. To understand it, this part more, I would say, please read um, the textbook, the online uh, videos, please watch the online videos, 
and try to read some of the articles from online and it will really help you to have an idea how to write a good problem statement. Again, this is the killing part. I don't know as a researcher how many times he or she has to re write this problem statement to satisfy the supervisor. Good luck to you.